Praise the Lord, dear friend, Thomas Manton, the fourth year. I'm very excited about what the Lord is having me to speak about. Uh, I, I'm amazed how he talks to me. Uh, I have a lot of notes. I hope I can get to a lot of them. And I can't get through them all, but I have enough to last year a week. But I'm going to pick a few things out from some brilliant things that I've written and uh, another Bible, a couple of Bible sources here. The Lord is serious about our success, very serious about our success, so much so that he gave us many ways to get blessed. Last week I was talking about the, I was born to be blessed. That was the brilliant title God gave. And I thought, this is great. And from Proverbs 10.22, the Lord says, His blessing, the Lord's blessing, will make one rich and add no sorrow. It's amazing how foolish people can be when God is on a mission to bless you, to prosper you, to make you rich like he's doing, like he's doing for me. And uh, some others. But a lot of people don't understand that. They don't understand that. They get caught up in cultures and rituals and religious things and systems and communities and things like that where there's no blessing coming out of it or else maybe they're doing a good business that they're even if they were half serving the devil they're still going to prosper because their business is doing you know they got some business thing going on but if you want to get blessed by God I, I love this, like this morning I was praying and I, and I was telling the Lord again, I, the presence of God was so strong. I was telling the Lord again, like, Lord, you're, you're everything. You're, you're everything. You really are. You're really everything. So the, the funny thing is that a person that's a real thinker like I am, a man of the earth, like traveling all over the world, doing so many things, so business-minded, I don't always come off as being so blatantly spiritual, but in my heart, but, but, if, but I am more than meets the eye because inside of myself, I mean, my heart is toward God a trillion percent. I know what Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. And last uh, week in the born to be blessed, I was born to be blessed message. The Lord was having me to share that from Jeremiah 17. When your trust is in man, you could be really messed up. I hate to use the word cursed, but that's what the Bible said. You know, sometimes you just want to be nice for a minute and not talk about like, how vicious the scripture is sometimes. You just want to kind of add a little sugar on it. You know what I mean? Put a little strawberry jam on the, on the toast. And not have to go so deep into, uh, you know, how vicious it can be. It needs to be vicious because so many people in the world are wicked. But to a righteous person, we don't need to hear all that. The wicked need to hear all that. People being corrected need to hear all that. But the righteous, they, you're, you're right in the palm of his hand. You know, what's the problem? You know what I mean? I want to hear good things. So... You, you got to understand that your trust can't be in people. You know, I'm reminded of this scripture also. I was reminded a while ago, to, earlier, to, a few moments ago today. The Lord said to me again, he said, remember I said to Abraham, you know, to go to these different places. And he ended up in this, uh, this crazy king's house. And he, want, he thought, well, the king thought maybe he could give him something. And Abraham, Abraham said, no, even the shoelace I won't take from you for a shoe. Nothing I need to take from you because, because Almighty God has made me rich. And he had this testimony, no man has made me rich but Almighty God. But Abraham was walking, Abram, who became Abraham, when the covenant was cut, he was walking with God. You know, when you're walking with God, he becomes your source and it gives you tremendous confidence. You have to understand that God is for your success. He's for you. 
He even said in another place, be still and know that I'm God. He even said, you don't have to fight for yourself, I'll fight for you. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, Moses was saying, but God told Moses to shut up because he, the people didn't need to be preached to because God was about to come and do a miracle. And those people suffered and they were going to be delivered by God. You know, when God is coming for you on purpose, by design, to bless you, my God, it's too powerful. It's not even powerful enough. It's too powerful. There's too much gonna ha going to happen. And nobody can really stop it. I can't tell any testimonies right now for many reasons. I'm a wise man in my young age. But I can't tell some, I cannot tell some testimonies for some very good reasons right now. But I tell you, if you only knew, but you don't know. And certain people are not going to know because I'm not going to tell them and no one's going to tell them. It's just a private thing between me and the boss. If you knew how much he loves me, if you knew how much he's doing for me, oh my God. I love these religious people. They get tweaked on, they get tick, tick, you know, checked off the boxes and any little thing. You know, one week they're telling you these swelling religious words, you're so great, you're so great, like they did to Jesus. You know, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Woo! You know? And the next week they're shouting, crucify him. You know, because something shifted. You know, they were weak. What's up with that? If you're like that, man, you're not going to get blessed. All of those people that said crucify him were never mentioned again in the Bible. But Jesus came back on the earth and began to walk around 40 days and 40 nights, walked through walls, ate fish, <laughs> charcoal fish. Hmm? Roasted in the fire, bread and fish, in the flesh and bone body, no blood or water was left in him. Cursed the spear from the soldier's sword, took all the water out of him, and the blood all drained out of him, and he had no flesh. He was flesh and bone. He was really a, a, a resurrected body, uh, spiritually, it's amazing. Jesus himself, spiritually, supernaturally, made to work. It's like robotic. You know, when you put the machine in the robot and the robot can't move by itself and then something makes it move. Whatever makes a robot move, it's like the Holy Ghost. That's a funny analogy, but excuse me on that, but it just came to my mind. I, saw, I see things in pictures, you know. But it's like the supernatural resurrection power of the Holy Ghost, who Paul said also dwells in us. <laughs> Woo, made him move, you know? And God can be like that with your situations, you know? Things are just on the move, on the move. Yeah, it seems difficult. Yeah, there's a lot of battles. Yeah, this is a lot of warfare. Yeah, there's a process. Yeah, there's time. Yeah, you need to be patient. Yeah, there's a lot of, but the process is ongoing because God is in the middle of it. Someone lift your hands here. Thank you, Lord. He's in the middle of it. And that's the most awesome thing any human can have. I want to give you one definition of, of success. I'll give you the title to this in a minute. I don't want to, I don't want to break my flow here. I mean, this is, it's, all, it's all flowing together. Just, 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 just let's work with this thing. Success is found through actually attaining exactly what you want. Now that is if the want is good. Because God said, you know, you ask miss because you're asking for something that's not the will of God. The Bible also talks about Psalm 37 verse 4, I think it is, the desires of your heart. He'll give you the desires of your heart, but the desires of your heart have to also be the desires of God, you know. And I believe when he's put those desires in your heart, <laughs> He'll quickly work on them to bring them to pass. You know, the scripture also says in Mark eleven twenty four, whatever things you're believing for, whatever things you're desiring and believing for, when you're praying, believe you'll receive them and you shall have them. Believe you shall receive what it is you're thinking about, desiring, asking God for, and 
you shall have them. John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me, there it is, abide in me. What does it mean? Live with me. Live under the shadow of my almighty. Of me, all, me of my almighty. Me, <laughs> me, the almighty. Me, the almighty God. Not Bruce Almighty, God Almighty. Yeah, all righty then. God Almighty, under his shadow, in his presence, in the secret place with him. Oh my, that's abiding with him. Then he said, then you'll ask what you, for what you want. King James says, you'll ask what you will. Yeah, that's good because what you will to happen will happen. I like that word will. Well, there's also that testament thing when someone's going to write up the contract or what they, who they want to give their assets to. It's a, it's a covenant, legal, verifiable, bona fide, actionable document of execution to bring things out the way that someone intended for them to happen. So will is a very powerful word. You'll ask what you will, and it will. He said shall again, shall is king. But let, let, me, let me use will, will. You'll ask for what you will, what you will, for what you will, and it will be done for you. I want to I wanna, I wanna call this partnership with God. Partnership with his word. Partnership with his program. Partnership with his covenant. Partnership with his action plan. Because... When you're in that flow, you can't be stopped. You're an unstoppable force. Again, I can't testify details, but if I could tell you how God has blown my imagination just in the last many hours and days, I tell you, I tell you, but I won't tell you. I'm telling you, but I'm not telling you. Praise the Lord. I, I mean, just beyond... I don't want to stir up any jealousy, you know. I, th I had this vision today. I thought, I I'd like to say, you know, the kind of week I had, like one week I had this kind of week. And I'd like to say it. I really would like to be free. You know, you think free speech is free. You think we're in a free world, right? But not really all the time because there are crazy freaking people here. Let me say it right. I said it, crazy freaking people. They're freaks. Yeah, they're freaks of nature. They're twisted freaking animals, yeah? Morons, idiots, going somewhere to happen. Jackasses, yeah, that's from the Bible, okay. You know those donkeys, pundas, punda jackasses. They're just jacked up, they're stupid, they're manipulative, they're greedy, they're lustful, they're filthy, amen. And you don't share those good things with those kind of idiots, those kind of people, lift your hands. Don't do it! Save yourself the trouble. Don't let some idiot thief see the stuff that you have. Don't let them know. Keep it private. That's why in this society, some societies like this one here, around here, people are very secretive and mysterious, you know? They crawl around like the, the wicked, crawl around like the mafia. They're like, they, they don't want to let, let their secrets out. There was one wicked guy, he, he didn't even have a phone. Couldn't trace him anywhere. Didn't even have a car. You didn't know what car he was going to ride in. You didn't know where he was going to go. He could change his clothes and disguise himself and jump in another car and go somewhere else and no one could figure out where he's going. Why? Because he had so much and he was so evil. Yeah, but now he's dead. So, God, God someone said, God rest, God rest what? No, it's either good or it's bad. You, by the way, get rid of this R.I.P. That's wishful thinking by a sinner, okay? R.I.P. is rubbish. Rubbish in person. Rubbish in perception. <laughs> I want to blast some stuff out of the world. I want to just, I always want to blow it up. R.I.P., you flipping idiot. R.I.P. what? Rest in peace. There's, there's only peace in heaven, and it's not just peace. It's, no, it's a noisy place. It's a wild place. There's worship. There's angels. There's dancing. There's glory. There's gold. There's diamonds. There's just millions of people. Come on. 
Rest. What do you mean rest? Are you tired? In heaven, you're not going to be tired. There's no energy problem. You don't have no blood sugar problem, blood pressure problem. You didn't eat too much greasy food that you feel stupid the next day. Your head doesn't work right because all the oil that's in you is clogging up your colon and your, your blood vessels and your brain isn't working right. And your belly's like, you're like uh, uh, uh. you ever feel like that after eating bad food? You go to eat some greasy food at night and you wake up the next day, you can't even think straight. Now, l listen, so I don't do it. I tell people, leave the oil out. I don't want oil. I don't need fried food anymore. I'm loving all this juice. Yesterday, glory to God, I feel the anointing. Whoo! Hallelujah. Whew, thank you, Holy Ghost. Yesterday, I had some pineapple and mint and ginger, and they said they didn't have the mint or the ginger. I said, I told the person again, did you hear what I said? Tell them this is what I want. Make it for me. It took a few minutes, but they figured it out. And they came out with this big, uh, big I came out with a big bottle of, you know, Pineapple and mint and ginger. Drank the whole thing, bless God. Oh, it's so good. I feel great. Hallelujah. I haven't had my cappuccino yet today. I'll have one afterwards. This is the after effect. I'll have cappuccino later. I didn't get to have one now. I don't need it. I feel great. Oh, hallelujah. Nature is wonderful, beautiful nature. Don't abuse it. Eat good things. Live, Live in good ways. And listen, partnership is so important with God and with anointing and with the word and with a servant of God like myself because the anointing is released for you to live great. Anything you want to buy, all the fruits you want to eat, however how, kind of house you want to have, bless God, whatever car you want to drive, have it, have it, have two, have three. Have a house here and have a house somewhere else. Have a car here and have a car somewhere else. You think God can't pay the... He has to lay off angels to take care of you. Well, if you put in too big of an order and you, you, you need too much to live, you know, it's going to be a struggle for God to help you do it. No, it's not that at all. Just, you're just adding zeros on to the thing. It's the same hope. It's the same faith. It's the same love. It's the same abiding in. It's the same partnership. It's the same success program. It's the same strategy. It's the same thing that causes all these things to happen. Like when you graduate and grow up a bit, you get up on a higher level. One thing you want to do is you want to, you want to be like uh, hobnobbing and rubbing shoulders with people that are blessed, successful, intelligent. They have a good heart. I tell you, God's also throwing out a warning. Like, you know what? People got to get their heart. They get checked out. Check your heart, man. Check your heart. If your heart is good, great. If it's not, hey, that's your problem, man. Go kick rocks. You know? Stand in the middle of the road and hope cars avoid you, you know? And the motorcycles and everything else. Just, just stand in the road with nothing. It's okay. Your choice. But God will come back later and say, I really wanted to bless you. What did you do to get ready to receive it? Partnership. The Power of Partnership, Volume 2. I'm calling this. I did a Volume 1 a few weeks ago. And uh, I'm, gonna, I'm continuing in the flow here. I'm going to be making a book out of this and releasing this revelation to people all over the world because two are better than one. Let me tell you something. When you connect with power by partnership, the warrior, Jesus, steps into your life on a level that he, he, he wasn't there before. And it wasn't just going to happen anyway. Like I said, someone that's kind of like in any kind of environment, they're doing a good business, they figured something out. They got their rhythm, their methodology going. They're going to make money in that business. They, just, they don't need God's help. Are you, are you seeing this? They don't really need God's help so much. But most people... you. Let me tell you, everybody, even that person, because a good business can go bad. Something wonderful can go south. Something going, was going north, meaning upward. We use north and south as good and bad. North meaning good, because it's going higher and upward. South, bad. It went, you know, it went south. Not that south is a, is a place. It's kind of a terminology, meaning it went down. Down like south, like below. So, especially in these volatile days, look at whole nations like China. 
their economy is getting whacked because of one stirring up of one thing. By the way, I want to say right now, I felt this from the Lord, and I wouldn't do it unless he told me. Well, I'd do it anyway by faith, but I just felt prophetically. I curse the coronavirus, and I command it to die in Jesus' name. I command it to be cured. I command it to dissolve. I command it not to spread. I curse it in Jesus' name. I am Thomas Manton IV, God's servant, God's prophet to the nations. I am cursing this virus right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And it will begin to die everywhere. Amen. It's not going to last. It's not going to become this pandemic, epidemic, plague. It's not the will of God that that happens. In Jesus' name, it's done. It is done. But China wasn't bargaining for this. Now, what if you have business in China? Wuhan or Gaodong or Hong Kong or what? All the people in Asia now, they're walking around wearing masks and they have machines. If you're going to go into a place, they're going to test you to see if they pick up anything. If they detect anything, they, they're grabbing you. There's a video, a guy was in his car and these whole group of, it looked like a joke. It looked like it was a staged, something from a comedy movie or something. It didn't even look real, but it was real. These people all with masks and suits on, and they even had this long stick like a dog catcher stick. You know, you're going to catch the old, they call them the dog catcher. They run to catch an animal, a dog. And these guys used to have these little funny vans back in the days, many decades ago. In America, they call them the dog catcher, you know. They'd have this long pole with a net on the end of it. And they run after it, and they get that dog. Wah! They pull it, the rope, and tie it. They caught themselves a dog. Now, they caught this guy pulled him out of his car and slapped this thing on his head and started dragging him somewhere because they detected the virus. Wow. Who thought that? Who knew? Who thought that was going to happen? Is that good for business? No. So in this world, we need God. Lift your hands. We, no matter who you are or how successful you are or what you're doing or how well off you, you, are, you think you are, you need God to help you anyway. You need his favor. I've said this before, it bears repeating. A large percentage of your prosperity comes from favor. In fact, almost all of it, like in the high 90%, comes from, comes from favor. And one direction you need to look, where there's no favor, where there's no love, where there's no care, exit, don't enter. You got to know which sign you're looking at, the exit or the entry, entrance or the en exit. When there's no favor, depart. When there's foolishness in the midst, don't try to impart, depart. You got to work with where there's favor. And where there's favor, you need to really show care and concern, and you need to reward favor. There's a few keys about honor I want to talk about. Honor is a seed, and this goes in realm with partnership, because partnership you can't partner with something that you don't have a feeling of honor toward. How can you? Desire and honor, care and compassion, favor, interest and desire. You can't. How can you partner with something you have no interest in? That'd be like two people that absolutely hate each other decide they're going to get married. For what? So they end up killing each other? Or they have a divorce lawyer waiting for the call, you know? No, it, you can make a drama out of it. It doesn't even make sense. Like two people that absolutely they're not attracted to each other, they don't care about each other, they're not on the same page, they don't even like each other, they don't enjoy each other, but let's get married. <laughs> you can't partner with that. You have to partner with something that you have desire for. I want to say it again. The people that are honorable, man, God is making them millionaires. Someone lift your hands if that's you. It's not everybody. Sure, carry on like nobody sees. Carry on like nobody knows. Dishonor, disrespect, blaspheme, persecute. Leave things undone. Don't care. You know, go ahead. Have at it. Enjoy yourself. But, but, but for people that really press in to something, oh my. The blessing of the Lord that makes rich and has no sorrow comes. I wondered about that. The blessing of the Lord, Proverbs 10.22, the blessing of the Lord makes rich 
It adds no sorrow. Is that for absolutely everyone? I would think yes, because it doesn't have a, uh, an address of a name on there. So, it, so really, it's possible for everyone. But uh, it doesn't happen experientially for everyone. Let me give you a definition. I want to talk about honor. Let me give you a definition of partnership first. It's the state of being, of working together as partners for the purpose of increase. I'm done with that. I wanted to get this phone out of my way. Goodbye, one phone. I have the other one up there if I need another. It's the it's a it's a purpose of design to work together by desire, by a mutual agreement and passion and desire for the purpose of increase. Anybody would think that God doesn't want to increase someone is, is not in the Bible. They're, they're one of these others, these otherly kind of people, you know. We think that people are supposed to be poor and destitute. What kind of God made the world so beautiful? Look at the animals that God has me find you pictures of these beautiful creatures that he made. Even lately, the last year, I found, I found pictures of beautiful creations that I didn't even know existed before. And I had a great man of God on the air last night, great apostle in America. He's on the air, and I was online with him, and he was, he said, young, a young prophet of the Lord. And I thought, yeah. I thought, I'll take it. Amen. Speak the word young. Prophesy. He started prophesying about something else, you know. He called me apostle, prophet, Thomas Manton, a young prophet of the Lord. You know, am I young? Jesus. Yes, I accept. That's his terminology, you know, the way he says it. And he said some, 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 some good things. In fact, one was very prophetic. I wrote him back. I said, this just happened this, this week. What you talked about just happened this week. He didn't know. He's in the studio talking from thousands of miles away. 10,000 miles from where I am is where he is. 10,000 miles apart we are right now. And he's speaking things he doesn't know. I hadn't told him anything, but it's prophetic. The Holy Ghost can speak. But when I look at him, our, our connection, our relationship in God, I mean, the, between our ministries, woo, there's care there. There's, there's love. There's concern. There's prayer. There's passion for breakthrough and increase from both of us, me to, toward him and him toward me. Him and all his people, they love me. Me and all my people, we love them. I mean, you know, that's how it is. That's a connection made from, from heaven for the earth, for blessing. The purpose of God is always for you to be enriched and empowered so you can do more. Write that down. The purpose of God for you, very clearly, simply stated and put, but it's, it's absolutely the gospel. The purpose of God for you is to become more wealthy more healthy, more empowered, so you can do more. Because when you don't have, you can't do. The last two weeks, I've been getting this scary, fleeting, it's, it's a little bit frightening, because it's very eternal, it's very otherworldly. I mean, the good other world, the heavenly realm. I keep getting this feeling, I look at people, and I look how they're like scratching, clawing, kicking, you know, looking in front of their nose, you know too close, trying to think of what they can do. And I, I don't have a care in the world about that. I feel like mine is already taken care of. I, I, I don't know how to describe it. I keep getting this fleeting glimpse. Like it happens all through the day. I look at people, I'm in different places and I see, and, and this thing comes on me, I feel it again. I'm like, what they're worried about right now, what they're trying to manipulate right now and try to do right now, work up right now, make happen right now, I'm not doing that. Because it's already taken care of for me. I'm working on the mission of God. I want to do more for him. I want to be with people that want to do more for him. Hello, not less, more. And all these things that people are like scratching and kicking and clawing about, I'm like, ah. I understand you have to be diligent to, to become rich. I understand you have to be diligent in this world. But it's like if you're fighting your own battle, if God's not with you fighting for you, it's pretty hard. You got to work all day at it. You got to drive the people and drive things and drive yourself. 
But if you're a partner with the anointing, you're a partner with, with us, with our ministry, with us, there's an anointing for increased coming and being breathed out upon people. It's phenomenal. One of the services we had, uh, a woman came. I've got to be careful to say the number. I really want to say it. I, I do. I'm not being funny or cheeky. I, I, wanted, I want to say it, but I don't know if I can say it. I thought about it several times today. Can I say the number? Probably not. Probably not. But there's someone that came here, and when I first looked at them, I thought it was them, and then I looked again, I thought I wasn't sure, but I kind of had a feeling in my spirit it was them. And the power of God fell at the end of the meeting, after we turned the cameras off and everything off, the power of God fell, tangible glory. And I thought about it afterwards. I said, well, some of the, the people that were here are good. It was for them, but it was for that person. I'm telling you. I'm telling you for real, it was for that person. Because you don't know what they did and what they've gone through. It, living in a crazy place where when, you, when you're rich and blessed and prosperous in business like they were, uh, doing well, they, all kinds of people, jealousy, hatred, betrayal, lies, deception, you can't imagine the things that people do. And when the person told me a little bit of it, I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I got you, I know, I know these, I know, I know it too well. No need for all the explanations. I know the whole pattern and the whole scenario. Prophetically, I can get it and tell you, but almost by the pattern and the natural, I, I know how things work around here, how people are. And God wanted to bless them, and I told them prophetically, I said, because you've come. They wanted to meet me before, and I just refused. I couldn't do it. It didn't, it didn't click in my spirit. And I thought, no, you had to come and get under the anointing and let the power of God touch you. Now go and begin to carry this home in your hands. And I slapped the hand like this. I said, carry this home and throw it on everybody and tell them what happened and explain everything and what happened in the service and what was talked about. Show them the video. You know, get, get that thing working, activated. Then now I see you. When I see you, you'll have something to tell me, some testimonies that have been, of some new things that are happening. These people got property supernaturally uh, through, through our ministry. They got uh, all kinds of stuff, but they were very extremely generous. I don't want to say the number. <laughs> I just feel, I feel, I feel restrained, you know, constrained. I don't want to say the number. If I, tell, if I said the number, someone's going to go, ooh, and I don't want your ooh, and you don't need to know. The ooh from the person that would say, ooh, I don't... <laughs> I'm not, I'm not dialoguing with you on this. No. I, I want to. I thought about it several times today, but I'm not going to say the number. But it is substantial. I mean, when I say substantial, I mean substantial more than you would guess. You'd guess a number? No. Let me, let me tell you, way more than that. And I thought about them, and I thought, they deserve it. They deserve it. They did something. I want to pray for them. I want to work with them. You know, this came to me very strongly in, in recent days about working with partners, praying for people to become rich, praying for people to become blessed in business. I'm doing that, and, I, and that's why the Lord wants me to talk about this here. I, I'm doing that. I'm very interested in partners, very interested in pushing people through that are, are, are also reciprocating, they're generous, they're you know, and there's no pay for play. It's not because like you, it's like you paid something or you did some, or entered some club with some fee. No, it's not like that. This is the kingdom of God. This is church. This is ministry. But people that invest in it, not half-hearted, not just there to take, not just there to exist and survive and get by, however, but I mean people that really, really, really put themselves and their money and that their, their, their time, because of the passion of God, not because someone's being paid or whatever, but because they, it's like a divine mission for them. Those are the right people. And the Lord spoke to me earlier today, too. He said, money, your money means a lot to you. Where your heart is, your treasure is. Where your treasure is, your heart is, the scripture said. Jesus said that. For where your heart is, your treasure is, and where your treasure is, there, there is your heart. Imagine giving your heart 
out of your heart flow the issues of life. That's why God said, guard it well. And your treasure, your time, your substance, that's a big thing. Because it took time and energy to get it. So when you're giving it, oh God, I tell you. And I'm thinking of several people right now that are partners. I'm, I'm praying for you. You that are watching me, that are my partners, and you that have been trekking with us a bit here, you've been following us, you need to become a partner. You need to write me a message. Say, I want to be a partner. I'm not asking you for anything right now. I'm just telling you you need to connect. Write a comment on the screen. Say, I'd like to be a partner. How can I be a partner? How can, how can I have you praying for me, man of God? I'll tell you how. I'll talk to you privately. Write a message. Write me a message. If you're watching this on the video after the fact, the comments, you can put a comment in the comment section. Sign into the account and write a comment. Write comments, all you want. And any, any fools that want to write stupid things, we, we find them and fish them out. There's a way to do that. There's a setting for that, that you get a notification. When someone writes, you'll see it. You don't have to go back and check the video every, every day. It'll notify you. We need to set that in motion, that thing. On my website, too, there's also a portal you could write on. I think it's uh, admin activated. I think we have to read it first to post it live or it just comes through. I don't know. But I want to check on that technically again. It should be like into the back office, all the messages that come in. And the good testimonies, will post them and share them with others. It's kind of a good filter for rubbish. You know, Kenneth Copeland said, uh, he made a policy decades ago when he was a young man in the Lord in the ministry starting. He said, I, anything critical of me, I refuse to read it. And we were talk, I, was, we were having a dis I was having a discussion with a great apostle on this yesterday. And he said something to me. He says, yeah, uh, don't read it because it will poison your mind and your spirit. You know, someone writes something, it doesn't mean that they have access to talk to you of something that's garbage. Like this man of God was talking about, there was someone who was writing his ministry. He gave instructions to his people receiving the mail. Anything blasphemous, wrong, off like that, uh, cut, get it, don't, don't let it get to me. I'm not interested. They, they asked, do you want to read it? He said, no. I don't. Because he said, then you have to wrestle with that thing. And when you're right, hello, and you, you're really going out of your way to serve God with all your life, and the people want to start talking rubbish, whoo! It's a distraction. It could annoy you. It could irritate you. It could distract you from your good work. I remember he was saying one time he took about two hours trying to answer this woman's letter. Uh, and then he, he, started, he stopped himself and he started to laugh. He said, I don't remember when I took two hours just totally, uh, I'm sure he has, and he does do this a lot. You know, he's not telling that he's not doing anything. But he says, when did, he asked himself, when did I take two hours recently just focusing on one person who's good to me? <laughs> Never mind some person that I hardly know or that I know or that I want to, and, and, they're, and they're writing some rubbish and I'm trying to give my position and take time to edit it well so it doesn't look like I'm, you know, poking them in the head, knocking them in the head with a rungu, you know. Hello. And then he stopped himself and said, what am I doing? So you got to watch that. There's such a thing called block and delete. Block, 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 block everywhere. You know, people that they think they have access to you. They think they, their opinion matters. They think they can just say anything. Oh, my. You can shut them out of your world electronically. And if they ever come up with a different address, a different number, whatever, one comes through, it's the last one. Do it again. And he just... Put a web around yourself for protection. You need to do that. But guess what? When you're partnering with God, his blessing, his confidence, his power, his anointing, the things that he's doing for you supersede and overrule and override and crush all of those other things. That's why I, I'm at a place today, I'll tell you, it, it, it's, it's an amazing place to be. And when you get to a certain age, a certain realm of maturity, or you've been doing things a long time, you really wish and pray that you could retroactively time travel back and backdate this to a few decades ago, saying, be who I am now, but then. 
with a younger body, hello, <laughs> a younger age, but you can't do that. But what a place to be. When God is your total source, he's doing things that it's so vast and grandiose you can't even talk about. And I'm not talking about from one source. If anybody thinks it's one source, you don't know. No, it's not one source. I got so many things going on and people that are really walking in the blessings of God, so many different avenues of revenues, different tributaries of blessings are coming. And then someone can think and have attitude, look at you, look you up and down and think they can treat you anyway and feel however they feel in their heart toward you. And you can just look at them and laugh. So you don't know the kind of day I had. Ha <laughs> ha! You don't know the kind of week I had. You don't know how much money God gave me. Woo! Glory to God. I feel like I'm going to take off. Whew. It's like my, my sandals are getting like the rocket fire in them. You know those guys, those things now you can hold and you can fly through the air. Whew. You got rockets in the bottom of your shoes. I feel like I, Jesus in heaven. How high is the ceiling? There's a chandelier here. Some nice kind of indirect light, funny things here. Wow. That ceiling is hard, though. I don't want to go that way. I'll bounce back down. It won't be good. Woo! Glory to God. You have no idea. But God wants you to have an idea. <laughs> success. Let me talk more about success. I'll get to that in a minute. Let me talk about honor. I'm jumping around here. But it's good. Honor is the seed for access into any environment on the earth. Honor is the seed for access into any environment on the earth. Let me tell you, when you have this thing called honor working in you, a success strategy program, a partnership program, a quest for anointing, a pressing in attitude, pressing into the things of God, you, it won't, nothing can stop you. I look at people that are so weak. You know, one person, there's one little thing. One, I've seen it with several people. One little thing that there was a good reason for, that they don't know everything about why, and they look at it on the surface, and they were like swelling, religious, I love you, God told me, and to be, and then the next day, they're somewhere else. Or you just don't see them. What happened to them? Boy, that was a weak program. That was a weak link. I thank God we weren't depending on you. Hello. Some of you know what I'm talking about. People are like that. Ha. I have a private joke. I also can't tell it right now. I'm laughing to myself. Lord, I can't say it. I really can't say it. It's kind of, it's kind of on the edge. I'd like to say it, but I can't. I'm just having my own moment right now, thinking about some people. Anyway. Can't say it on air. I don't think I should even say it to certain people. Praise the Lord. But I'm laughing inside myself. I thought some, a certain, anyway. <laughs> and it worked just the way I thought. The way I thought is how it happened. Little religious scaredy cats. People are funny, man. Lift your hands. Thank God it's not you. Hallelujah. Thank God it's not you. Lift your hands if it's not you. If it is, your problem. Help your own self. And I mean it. I mean that. Help your own self. Lose it all. No problem here. Do you understand that? It's not the mentor's job to t chase the mentee. It's not, the, it's not the, the, the mentor's job to chase the protege. It's the protege's and the mentee's job to chase the mentor the coach, the apostle, the boss, because he has something they need to extract from him. And he has it. You don't. So who needs who? But of course now, we always need people to teach. That's why Jesus called us into the ministry. Hello. You notice Jesus, people say I look like him. Everywhere I go, I hear Yesu or Jesus. There's Jesus again. He's back. Hi, Jesus. And Oh, yeah. It's all right. But they call me the Lion King. 
What's the good one's name? Don't call me Mustafa. Is he the evil one? Who's the, who's the good one? Who's the nice one? I know it's Simba, but the, the nice one, you know, the daddy o lion, the one that's cool, not the bad, not the evil guy. In the Lion King, I never saw the Lion King, by the way. Me, of all people, I've never seen the Lion King. I really need to sit down and watch that flipping movie. I have never seen it. I'm responsible. People call me the Lion King. I should know something about it. I was in New York, and a dear friend of mine is in New York right now. Hello to you in NYC. Bless you. Palm set in fire from heaven. I told them something today about New York. They're dealing with a, a situation, uh, some people not acting right. And I thought, go get your stuff. That's what came to my mind. Instead of talking about the sights of the city, you know, I had this in my spirit because I'm a businessman. I'm a businessman. I'm a business-minded prophet. I'm not some, you know, uh, la la whatever whatever joker, you know, kicking around, acting like I don't have anything in this world to do. Yeah, praise the Lord. So I said, get your stuff back. Someone that's manipulative and ungrateful and and irritating and cause you problem, they don't deserve the blessing. I said it. Get it back. They said, yes, you're right. True, it's true. I need to do that. So I said, just do it. The New York, the New York Nike check sign, you know? I have some Nikes on, Nike something on somewhere. I got the check mark. Here it is. Here it is. There's a check mark right there. Oh, yeah. Nike check mark, just do it. I, I was in the in the Nike superstore, the the factory building, it's like six stories high. And they didn't even have what I wanted, except a beautiful pair of Nike Air Max, that orange on the back and black front and the nice bottom, and you walk on them, you feel like you're walking on pillows, cushions, really, really powerful. And uh, boy, they're really all that. They were a little bit pricey, but I thought, no, I deserve it. So I took a picture of, before I had them on, I should have put them on first for the photo, because I had my sandals on with white socks. It really looked funny, yeah? White socks and red sandals, it didn't really look. I, was, I looked at that, I was like, why did I do that? Volume one of this power partnership, I was wearing a track suit. I regret it for the rest of my life, I'll never do it again, Jesus help me. I was looking at that, I was going, ha! Huh, boy, that's not, that's not for a message for a video for preaching, Lord forgive me. He doesn't mind, but I didn't, you know. You know these people that dress like slobs that are preachers? You know these things these days, they wear t-shirts and... I have some friends like that, I don't want to offend them. Very anointed men, passionate men, but that's not my style. I got private, ta I got different tailors to try to make my stuff. They made this shirt, they made these things, they make these things for me. I, I don't like to dress shabby, I like to look elegant. I'm a king, you understand? I'm a, I'm a royal ambassador of Jesus Christ. Should, should I look like a joker with ripped jeans, a t-shirt, stinking hair all funny, looking like a common loser and going, oh, Jesus, hallelujah, let's jump on the platform. Jesus in heaven. They should send a military squad to call the fashion police to knock you in the head and take you off the platform, put some proper clothes on you. I know some people, they just don't know how to dress at all. They need, really need help. Anyway, let me, let me preach on that another day because some people just don't care. They just want to do their style the way they do. It's the dress down look. I understand. In America, they do that. Some places in Europe, they do that. Some people in Africa, at least they'll wear a suit and a tie, a jacket and a tie, even though the jacket would stand up by itself when it's wet because they haven't been able to afford a dry cleaners in their whole life. So they probably have someone wash it in the sink. Praise the Lord. A jacket. A suit jacket. Wash it in the sink with water. You're not supposed to do that. That's why the fabric has these little riffles on them, you know? You look at a guy's jacket, it looks the colors all faded and worn out. He's had that thing for 20 years, could never afford to buy another one. But at least they'll put a jacket on, maybe a tie, even though it's halfway up to here. You ever see these guys with the ties up to here? And then they got to pull their pants up higher. They got to pull their pants up higher, you know, so cover their ugali belly, the japati and ugali filled belly that's sticking out like a round thing. And uh, they call themselves bishop, yeah, or something or whatever. I know these bishops with iron sheet churches, you know, dirt floors, a few chairs, you know, lots of rocks. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not trying to be cheeky or funny. I'm just telling the truth. I mean, come on, let's step up the game a little bit, right? 
Let's step up the game. I, I believe that's probably one of the reasons God has me preaching in Africa to help people with that. But some people can't handle it. But the ones that can, hey, get fashion conscious. You know, some places around here, you can't even dress well. You dress well, you're a target. So impoverished, so full of thieves and lying fools and corruption and mess. You want to dress down and act like just blend in with everyone, however messy they look. You want to look like them. Otherwise, you stand out and people start eyeballing you up and down, thinking you have something. They're looking for your bag. They're looking for your whatever. Look at Jesus. Even Jesus, they, they gambled to have his clothes. His clothes were so good. Let me talk about it. Jesus' clothes were so elegant, they were casting lots to get them. Who on earth begs to have or gives money or does a, a gambling test with money to get a condemned man's clothes? you'd be scared to wear him because of where he's going. He's going to be crucified. He's going to be executed and murdered. Terribly so. Do you want his clothes? It's like you're taking on, but the clothes were too beautiful. Lift your hands. They couldn't resist. Why would these people that were hurting and persecuting the master want his clothes? Because they were so fine. That's why. You ever think about that? So Jesus didn't walk around with ripped jeans and a t-shirt, let me tell you, to get to be like normal with the people. He never did it. Everything he had was beautiful. I've seen visions of the Lord's appeared to me uh, several times, and I, I don't, I'll tell that in another session, but some of the more details on that. But he had the most beautiful fabrics, most elegant, most beautiful colors, royal garments. I mean, my God. So we want to look good for the master. But all these shiny clothes I have, I, you know, I change, you know. I can change back into something casual and walk around the common place. You know, you, you kind of get used to doing that. Because you dress too elegant all the time. Nobody can mess with me because you'll die. Lift your hands. I'm, I'm exempt, okay? All this foolishness, come at me. Go ahead, try it. You will drop dead at my feet. Did you hear what I said? Before you can even touch me even someone else would kill you. I was in downtown Nairobi, and I went to this bad street, and some skinny guy, I think he looked like a Somali guy, because I saw him afterwards, it's from the corner of my, he was so skinny, he was an, obviously an impoverished one, because there are some very rich people from that country. So skinny, and he came at me to try to, uh, wanted to try to grab my bag or something like that, you know? I wasn't bothered at all. And guess what? Not the person with me. They were clueless. They didn't protect me at all. I thought, boy, gee, nice bodyguard you are. You're fired. Get the hell away from me. Praise the Lord. But what if I really needed you, you know? What would happen? I, I mean, you dropped, you dropped the ball and the, and the coffee, whatever. But guess what? Some local guys from the street saw this guy coming toward me. And listen to what they did. I'm telling you before God. They, they ran, they grabbed the guy, wrestled him, and started beating the guy. Pulled him into the street and started beating him. And I kept walking. I thought, oh, Lord. Someone lift your hands. One of our people said these street people came for their bag. And they were trying to kick at them to try to get the bag. And then they fell down themselves on the floor. It's the Holy Ghost. Lift your hands. Protection is over our people. Some of them, I think they got offended. One of these religious people, I think they got offended, you know, because I take some action on some things, you know, and they, they can get offended. They think, is that nice? I don't know about nice. Nice is in France, and nice is on the cookie box, but I don't see it in the Bible. In the Bible, there's war, there's reality, there's spirituality, there's blessings, and there's protection. Praise the Lord. And you got, you got to protect yourself sometimes. Don't think about how, how nice it is or isn't. I was amazed. And these guys started speaking in Swahili. And they were like, whoa, 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 whoa. Bazungu, whoa, 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 whoa. Jesus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was like, yeah! <laughs> Woo! I didn't even know them. I just waved. Thank you very much. The Lord bless you, son. <laughs> Sons and company, bless you. Be blessed. You saw that guy coming. He was behind. I didn't see him. I did not see him. 
I didn't see him. I was in Eastleigh one time. You know Eastleigh? Oh, I went once. I said, nah, I think this is enough. Praise God. I'm walking down the street, and some guy came up, and I felt something touch my back, you know? And I turned around, and I just went, I just stared at the guy. The guy just went like this. He froze. He bowed his head down, and he just went whew, and ran like as fast as he could to get away. I thought, what was that? And they thought, someone told me, hey, these people around here, man, this is what kind of neighborhood this is. This is a long, long time ago. You know, I wasn't quite as, I was, but not quite as astute in understanding about the whole environment as I am now. But I thought, oh. But the roads were so bad, and it was so hard to park and walk around. It was just oppressive. You know. I went to the Maasai market one time, and they were like, Mzungu, and they were like running after me, and I told them, I'm not interested in that. Don't bother me. I said, if I want it, I'll tell you. And they wouldn't stop. They kept coming and coming. I felt like I was like this. I was ready to knock one guy in and just punch him right in the head. I said, you flipping idiot. Are you nuts? Did you hear what I said? Do you speak English? They were like, ah. Uh. Do you speak English? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. I said, I'm not interested. Get away from me. And he still kept coming. So people had to grab the guy. So again, it was divine protection. Somebody grabbed this guy, pulled him away. And said, I don't know if they slapped him or what. Jesus in heaven. This, you know, some, sometimes, you know. Anyway. So an environment like that, how could somebody walk around all elegant? Like with a, you know, there's these bags that cost up to half a million dollars. I would never. I found out the knockoff cost like 200 bucks. They're called Birkin, B-I-R-K-I-N. Uh, don't get too many ideas because you can't afford a real one. And in fact, it's a waste of money. Buy a house, please. You could buy a house for what you pay for a Birkin bag in Nairobi. You could find an apartment to buy for 15 million. It's $150,000, okay? And you could find one to buy for 8 million, $80,000, yeah? How many of there's some apartments, maybe not the the toppest neighborhood, but different parts that are okay, right? A new building going up, eight million. It's eighty thousand dollars. Please don't even think that you'd buy a car or a bag. You see these Lexuses? Lexus five seventy LX. It's so overrated. I sat in one in Dubai. I was like, ha, huh, how much is this? A hundred and something thousand dollars. I was like, plus the shipping, plus the what? I said, you must be out of your cut and pick in mine. So I bought a Mercedes. Praise the Lord. I got a crazy deal, and it was way less. And I, I asked the Lord, I said, hey, uh, I asked the Lord, I said, uh, should I get this? He said, yeah, get it, buy it. He, then he said, do it by faith. I thought, Lord, you're telling me faith, I have cash. How many know faith is good, but cash is good? I don't want to say which one is better, because faith is a holy thing. I don't want to get funny with the things of God. But when you have cash, you don't need to use your faith. You just use your cash. Lift your hands. You understand? But maybe you don't know what I'm talking about. But it's, it's like the faith part of the formula is taken care of already. So he says, do it by faith. I thought, well, that's an unusual word. I said, okay. Then when the car was coming into the port, a relative of a person, a friend of mine, who's a boss person down in the port, is a lady works with the government and she was God was going to have her help me with the whole process which was a nightmare try to import a car by yourself especially being a foreigner like moi uh, they know you're a mzungu or something and then you got to get the car and make sure it's okay and all the paperwork and all you, you have no idea so there was a lady that God was going to use to help streamline the whole process and get it through Guess what? Her name was Faith. <laughs> he said, do it by faith. He knew already. I didn't know. I didn't even know faith at that time. But some of these new ones, like a new one, they, they're saying it's like 17 million. That's $170,000. And they're like, oh, import duty paid. I'm like, duh, for that kind of money, you should, you should just throw in a camel. Praise the Lord and a new wardrobe, and a diamond ring, and a diamond watch. Praise the Lord. 
duty import paid, you know, like you're doing me a favor for 17 million. Jesus in heaven, you buy that car? You know, there's a leading uh, uh, government official who just had a bad accident. He was really hurt very bad. And he was in one of these Toyotas, I heard. The thing could fall apart. I saw a video clip, a little saloon car, and sometimes you want to copy the link and keep it, but I thought, I don't want to see this again. <laughs> there's a line in a movie called, F F they say it in German, like, Auf Wiedersehen, something like that, meaning until we meet again. I can't say the word right. Ow, free to zing, something like that means that, you know, see you next time until we meet again. And the guy in the movie said, he's German. He said, uh, I would say, Auf free to zing, but if I'm not, no, I'm not saying it correct. But he said, but because I never want to see you again, you're so despicable, I just say to you, sir, goodbye. <laughs> what a line in the movie. And he won Best Supporting Actor. Uh, he won the Oscar for the Best Supporting Actor in that movie. What a, what a great, what a great uh, actor he is. So he says, since I never want to see you again. So there's some things like you don't want to see them again. I didn't want to see it again. But it would be interesting for someone to watch to know you need a better car. Hello. I'm telling some, now nah, this testimony I can tell. Uh, so the guy went around in a little Toyota saloon car. You know, they call it saloon. The four-door little small Toyota. Nissan or Toyota. Made all plastic, very simple design, slapped together. Ay, ay, ay. And he went around his car and he lost control. And instead of pulling back in the lane, there was a truck coming the other way. Ooh, -wee. a big one, the big lorry, the semi, 18 wheeler, tractor trailer. We call it in America, you call them lorries in England and here. With the 18 wheels on it, the big one. So he slid. And the car went, didn't go back to the lane he's driving it. It went the other way to the right. And the, the, the truck hit the car head on. Boom! And instantly, all the parts of the car went flying in every direction. It was over. Over. And guess what? And the guy who was driving went flying through the air, too, with the parts of the car. And the video clip. And you know these little GIF GIF things on the internet now? And they keep playing. You, if you can click it, it keeps playing over and over and over. Or it says auto loop. And you just keep watching it because you're in such amazement. Like the car literally dismantled on the impact. And the guy that was driving is now through the air, flying across the road, landing with all the parts of the car. I would imagine that he was dead. I would imagine. Or so broken up that maybe can't put, be put back together again. Flying through the air, the car was no more. So I was having a discussion with someone, like you want a car, you want a better car, you want a solid car. Let me tell you, I don't know who I'm talking to here, but partnership will produce that for you. Hello, a friend of mine in South Africa, a man of God, he sent a seed, a large seed, a few thousand dollars, to, to, to a servant of God who's very anointed, my dear friend, and he got a great harvest on that. Someone gave him a Mercedes, uh, a, a special custom uh, high-end, you know, exotic Mercedes as, for free, gave it to him as a harvest. So the man of God chuckled and said, boy, that's a good deal if I ever saw one. The seed that he sowed was just a couple thousand dollars and he got this high-end Mercedes for that. Boy, that's a good deal all day long. So he's kind of chuckling about how powerful the, the harvest can work for you when you sow. And I'm going to talk about seed. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about a few things about wealth. Wealth creation, how to get it. How it, how it happens for you. Partnership, my friend. Now, many years ago, before I got saved, it was a few months before I got saved, maybe half a year or so before I got saved, I would have not made it to heaven. I would have been gone. I was driving in a Mercedes on the highway and an ice storm happened and people told me not to leave and me and my stubbornness went anyway because I thought no one will be in the office, I'll get some more work done, but the weather was too bad and I just didn't listen. Sometimes you got to listen. You know, even Miles Monroe, when he was flying on his last trip, when his plane crashed, people were trying to say, the weather is too bad, sir. Please wait. 
he said, I, I got to get to have a conference. I got to get there. Oh, well, you didn't get there. You went to heaven. Lift your hands. Sometimes you got to listen to people. He didn't make his conference. He made it to heaven early. That was very tragic. Never got to the conference. Just Im imagine if he would have just waited till the morning. And said, I can't make tonight's session. The weather's bad. I'm just going to cool my jets, rein in my horses here, stop in a minute and just say, okay, I'll come early in the morning when the sun comes out. He'd still be here. Still be preaching to us the great revelation that he had. What a great loss. But he didn't listen. So I didn't listen. And a tractor trailer came sliding down the, the road, and I lost control on the ice and the Mercedes Benz. But those cars have steel, steel rods, not rods, but beams, not round rods, but squared, little like, like a two by four would be a beam. Not that big, maybe a, a few of them in the door. And it, it's all along the side panel of the car, through the doors to the body, very solid. And that's where the, the impact of the tractor trailer, the truck hit. And it, it bent the car in half. The, sti the stick where you go like this, you know, the steering thing on the floor? Or on the center console, wherever it is. It goes forward and backward. Now it's facing this way. So I wanted to put it in gear to move the car off the highway. I wanted to drive the car a little more. It was not drivable. So I'm literally like, pulling like this to try to get the thing back in gear, pulling it sideways to just pull the car off the thing. Now what if I have one of these little saloon cars? Nissan, Sunny, NZE, what do you call them? <laughs> even a Lexus, even a Nissan, Lord have mercy, one of these boxy vans or Noah vans or Town Ace, I call it something else, but because you got to be stupid to drive that if you want to be. Yeah, amen. I mean, it's all right if you, you didn't have another car, drive it, but please have your angels working for you that nothing impacts with you. So I thought, yeah, we need to have the best car. How are you going to get the best car? So I walked out of that thing without a scratch. Should have been dead. Should have been dead. The whole car was like an accordion. It was bent in half. And I'm in the left side. I actually got out. The door didn't work right because everything was worked. I had to push the door. And I got out and I was OK. And something interesting happened. The glass all shattered. The roof caved in. All the glass shattered. And a little a sliver of glass from the shattered glass fell in my hand, my left hand. I didn't realize it. So I felt something. So I went like this. I rubbed my hands together. And when I did, the glass cut into my hand. And I looked, and there was blood here, right here in the palm of my hand, blood. And all I could think about afterwards was like the blood of Jesus, Jesus the Savior. You know, I wasn't saved yet. Jesus the Savior, the nails through his hands, the blood. It, it, I, this, this is what came to me later, and I was like, thank you, Lord, for sparing my life. And the Lord even spoke to me. He said, when that happened, I sent angels to help you, but guess what? They also had the help of Mercedes-Benz. Lift your hands. I hope you're getting my point. Angel of the Lord made the truck driver to his own peril turn over the other lanes, and the truck was now sliding sideways. This is like something out of a Hollywood movie. You ever see the movies with the great car chase scenes, car crash scenes? It was like that. On the New Jersey Turnpike, in the middle of an ice storm, doing 70 miles an hour. If that thing had, if the guy didn't turn the truck and kept coming straight, there'd be nothing left of anything. Because that kind of level of force, you can't. No matter of steel, no matter of, uh, no amount of steel is going to stop it. All right? Because of the absolute force of the impact. But he turned the thing this way and, the, and, the, and it's sliding sideways. And the side of the track, the trailer, I actually saw it coming at me and I had nothing I could do but just scream. So my life flashed before my eyes. What an ex I haven't thought of this in a long time. Boy, it's amazing God's bringing this back to me to share with somebody, many people. 
I haven't thought of this in a long time. My life went before my eyes. I screamed from the depth of my being because I saw that thing coming and knew it was going to hit and couldn't be stopped, and I didn't know what was going to happen. But it hit the car, and where it hit, uh, on the front side, the steel panels and also the, the engine block took a lot of the blow. Bent the tra broke the transmission in half. The roof caved in, the whole right side, all the glass was gone. The roof is in, the door is all the way in, I mean, inside the car where it hit. And the power of the steel of that car took the impact. It left me in my little driver's seat, okay. Lift your hands, hallelujah. But what if I had something else? And what if God hadn't sent the angel to make the guy turn out of the way so the side would come, not the front, which would have been absolute death. No, no, no way around that. This is a long time ago. This is now, oh, that was 1985. <laughs> a few minutes ago, yeah? Hallelujah. Someone said, Prophet, 1985, I wasn't even born yet. Yeah, you weren't. 1985, a few minutes ago. And God's protected me all these years because his hand on my life, no, no accident, no calamity, nothing could come and take you out. You could have a battle here and there, but you know, you'll make it through it. I had another thing happen, my, my, uh, my right arm inside here, I got all steel in here. From, uh, needed, I needed that, I won't tell the story now, but, so I'm like half Terminator, half Lion King, half Jesus, half Terminator, and cyborg, you know? If you saw the x-rays in here, you'd see all these steel, titanium, and you touch it here. I don't know if you can hear it, but knock on, not, not wood or bone, knock on steel. <laughs> and God did miracles in that for me. I tell you, you know, some, they said to me, it was the worst thing, problem they've ever seen of, of that kind ever in history they've seen. But they had technology that was just made just for me. Praise the Lord, God knew. And they used that, so my arm is fine. Hallelujah. Someone say praise the Lord, because I wasn't supposed to be able to do any of that. Wasn't supposed to do any of that. He said people that had 10%, even 10% of the way that things shattered, uh, they can't even move their arm like this because the things they put in there locked their arm in place. So they're walking around like this. When the guy first told me about the situation, I yelled at him, an Indian man, doctor. I said, no, that's not for me. And they said, well, we'll have to wait. He said, we didn't feel you, you'd want to do that. I said, no, I don't. They said, we'll have to wait because this new technology just came out of these titanium plates and they cost 10,000 British pounds each and there were several of them that they had to put in. Guess what? It was covered. I didn't pay a penny. Lift your hand. I was in the hospital 33 days, didn't pay a penny, never got a bill. Imagine that. What a miracle. Our God has done so many miracles. So they said, well, you'll have to wait because they can't be here until at least 14 or 15 days from now. So I was like, really? That's bad. So what's the alternative? He says, well, we'll just cast everything and leave it. <laughs> leave everything the way it is. Uh, and I was like, eesh. Lord, help me. So guess what? Whenever I'd go like this, move, try to move my hand a little bit, I used to do it to scare people. Because I was full of so many painkillers. You, you can't survive with shattered bones like that. You lose your mind. The pain is beyond imagination, yeah? I remember after the surgery, I, I think they had, the surgery time had gone and they were probably gonna give me some more stuff to numb everything in the body again. And it was just wearing, starting to wear off. And I felt this feeling and I said, what is that? When I was just waking up, what on earth is that feeling? It's like all of the nerves in my arm were screaming like ee, like frantically, and it was vibrating and moving. I was like, Jesus, oh, you better give me some more of that, whatever you got, because this could make someone go insane. 
So, I, so whenever I wanted to scare anybody, I had some people come to visit me and I'd just go like this with my hand and you'd hear all the bones go. <laughs> they were all shattered. And then people started crying, running away. It was almost like what? And I just did, you want to hear it again? They were like, no, please! <laughs> Woo, Lord Jesus. Anyway, I witnessed to the doctors, told them all about the Lord, led people to the Lord. Glory to God. Lord, how could you have me share these testimonies? I've never shared in a long time. Oh, my God. So his protection is upon us. His protection is upon us. Even when the devil would take his best shot, you know, take his best shot, he can't succeed. He can't get through. And that was in 2005, a few minutes ago. What year is it now? 2020. It's 15 years ago, yeah? A few minutes ago. I'm fine. Wonderful. Better than ever. Someone thank God for his protection over your life. Psalm 91 says, We dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Abide in the shadow of the Almighty. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. So honor produces something. And the fragrance of honor is as distinctive as is the odor of dishonor, the stench of dishonor. Diligence is immediate intention to an instruction, but delayed obedience is the proof of dishonor. Honor is a seed. Honor is a seed. Honor is a seed. Passion is a seed. Purpose and partnership is a seed. It's not enough for you to obtain something also, but you also then must contain it, maintain it, manage it, multiply it. This is my book, The Laws of Success. All right, uh, on page 25, I think I have. Okay, uh, you could get a hold of this book. We're, 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 we're sold out. We're going to reprint on this. It's also going to be available. It's also available online as an e-book. I'm going to be starting to put those out and make the offer for those. Uh, in the coming few days, so you can get a copy of this. You really need this. It's awesome. And the Lord had me write this. A lot of things are in here, but it's not enough just to obtain something, like to get a blessing, but you got to then contain it, maintain it, manage it, multiply it, and then climb even higher. How are you going to do that unless your hand is together in God's hand? How are you going to do that? God will give you great ideas through the partnership with his anointing. Wealth will follow a great idea whose time has come if it's properly managed and made into a workable plan of action and then implemented. God will cause you to be blessed for his will, of, his will for you is abundance. All right, I want to talk about, I have so much more on this. Please get the book, get this book, another one of my books. Uh, we're also going to be offering this online, Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. I'm reading from, and... Uh, uh, some others, uh, amen, some others that I'm also going to reprint on. I don't have a copy of them right here. But we're sold out of all the books, but we are. We've sold out of several printings, and we're going to reprint. Let me say this. A, a few keys about, about partnership and sewing and connecting. There's never a day when you can't do it. God has allowed no day. Listen to me. God has allowed no day for you to live where you can't do it. You have something to sow, something to grow, something to do, something to pursue, something to make happen every day of your life. Every day of your life. There's never a day when you have nothing to do, nothing to sow. Another point is you, you will always reap what you sow. So if you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. I know people that have sown bountifully things, and man, they're, they're reaping in the millions, and they're going to continue to, and they're going to do it. It's going to be perpetual. They can't lose. I told this one guy that wants to do some work for us, I said, look here, uh, anybody that's with me prospers. You, you can't lose when you're with me. I hope the guy can understand it, because he seems, he seems a little... Like he kind of gets it, but he kind of doesn't. You know, you know, you see someone like that, you got to kind of help them understand a few things. He, it's like he kind of gets it, but he, there's some things he just doesn't get. 
and I really hope that he can perform. Now, now the whole thing, listen to me, partnership from his end. And someone could be doing work for you and they're getting paid and they're doing it as, a, as their business, you understand? But they have to do it right. I'm looking for a specific, tangible, specific, detailed, meticulously done, perfection result. A, a work of art, a work of perfection, or else it's, it's either that or it's nothing. Because I have other people that can do it halfway. Already. I've, I already have people that can do it halfway. So this guy, he did one thing that it seems like he really gets it. And I even have, photo, I even have a photograph of it, okay? The, the, the excellent thing that he did. And I pointed back to it. And I said, you see that? You, can, you, can you replicate that? Do you got it? Do you know how to do that again? And he said, of course, he looks kind of like this, you know, you know, these people. Kind of looks like, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like he says, yeah, but I hope so. So now the onus of production is on him. But if he can do that and be that guy for me that, that can take care of that, that business, that's, that's something that's so necessary and so important and do it perfectly, uh, whatever, he's, whatever he's getting out of it for his business is nothing compared to the blessing of the Lord that can flow. How many know a prophet can get excited and happy or a prophet can get really irritated and it's not good? You, know, you don't want to do God's people wrong. You don't want to do anybody wrong. Uh, I, I was having a conversation with a really high-level person too uh, and they were talking about doing the right thing, you know. Some people that do the wrong thing, how it comes back to them how they, many have died, many are dead and in hell. Many people, many people, not a few. Many people have lost what they had. They lost their opportunity, they lost their business, they lost their, whatever they had, lost it by not being straight. Let's pray a minute over this thing called partnership. If you think it's not there, look at, look at, look at uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 4 verse 9 talks about the, the two together, working together. And I want to prophesy to you this word that I heard. It's really awesome. The warrior will step into the equation with you when you're a partner. Two are better than one. You by yourself, you're not getting the result the, as much as you need it. But when you partner with God, partner with his servant, partner with the anointing, partner with the word, partner with the, the make that connection your connection. Pipeline to heaven, however you want to call it. A, a something you're going to receive blessings through and from. Wow. The warrior steps in. The Lord's been talking to me about that the last few days, this warrior thing. The warrior, the warrior angels, the warrior prophet, myself, the warrior people, the warrior connection, the warrior apostle, the warrior Jesus himself. Hello. Hello. The warrior, the Holy Ghost himself, and whoever he's going to use on the earth. It's very powerful. Without it, you can't get much done. Somebody said, My, a man that's worth, he, he has about a billion dollars worth of property, and he's making hundreds of millions of dollars in his business. He said, I could do and have none of this if I didn't have good people. He said, you, it's impossible to get anything good without people. Impossible. Partnership, you know, you need, you need like a, an advisor, a helper, a wealth manager, a, an investor, you know what I mean? You need people like that. Like if people get together like in a relationship and they connect, their relationship needs to be productive like that. Whether it's in marriage or business or wherever, partnership has to be productive. Hello? The partnership has to produce something. It's not just there like, oh, well. You know, I hope I get blessed. You keep hoping. I have, I have a whole chapter here on hope. Let me read you some scriptures on hope. I have some. And then now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity, which is love. Jeremiah 17, 7, again, as I was talking about in the last session of this, uh, in the message I was born to be blessed, that I did last week. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, <clears throat> in whose hope the Lord is who has his hope in God. Hebrews 10.35, cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. 1 Timothy 1.1, and, and the Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. 
So there's hope. But you got you could keep hoping for too long when God says, I want it to happen for you right now. And this is a formula key. I'm saying it, I'm trying to say it as, as succinctly and sharply as I can. It's a, this is a key, it's a combination to the vault, it's a key in the door, it's a formula that produces the result from the equation. Partnership. 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 It's powerful. Let me tell you something. If you think the seed isn't important or your partnership isn't important, it's really the only influence that you have over your future. What you do and what you sow, what you give, what you do, what you demand, the harvest you're going to get from seeds. The, only, the way you can influence your future is by sowing, by giving, by connecting, of course, by tithing and giving and connecting and working diligently in your business with God as your partner and with me as your partner. You know, I'm praying for several business people. It's, it's becoming very, very loud in my hearing, in my, in my mind, in my spirit to pray for entrepreneurs and people. If you're in business and you want to have business, you, 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 need, to, you need to connect with this mantle. Because when I see you, and I see you're serious and generous and connected, I'm praying for you to get blessed. And some things can't happen any other way. They just happen by partnership. So I'm going to write that word down again. P-A-R-T-N-E-R-S-H-I-P. -E Partners in the ship, sailing out into the world to new horizons and new territories and new places. When you sow, let me, let me give you another key. When you sow into the anointing what no one else is willing to, let's say in your own setting, you'll reap what no one else can reap. You will get it, but they won't. This law works. Father, I thank you for the grace of heaven. I think that there's even more that I'm going to share on this, but uh, I, I feel so... I feel like a release, like a, like a switch. I feel like uh, content in what I've shared so far. I'm going to continue in this. We need to thank God in advance for our increase, but not just in the verbal sense, but we need to ha let it happen in the doing sense. In the doing sense, in the reality sense. And I pray that you'll do that. Ways to partner with me. You can write me a message directly. There'll be some information on the screen. There'll be some in the comments below, as they, people say. In the, in the comments below, the links and the information will be there. And uh, you could write to me and just ask me the question, how can I partner? How, how can I have you praying for me, man of God? You know, so many people just write, you know, there's people that just write me like prophesy to me. I, thought, I don't even know you. Who are you? Where are you from? I had one man of God telling me that, and I, we met over pain. I remember I was having some pain and some funny situation going on in a lot of warfare. And he was around that time and we met and I told him stories about whatever. I think I even bought the dinner that we were sitting at. And he's never given anything. He's never, we never talked in a long time. And then now he feels like he's in a transitional season and he's like, prophesy to me about my new season. I, I mean, I, I was in a kind of a mood that day when I read that, I was like, what? So I wrote him back, uh, are we in relationship? Hmm? How about we have developed some relationship and more friendship? And he wrote back, please explain. Like, he didn't even get my point. Because maybe people can find a prophet. They have nothing else to do. Hello. But to be free like that all the time. Now, when there's ministry flowing, please don't misunderstand it. When there's ministry flowing and people are coming to an event or a meeting and there's prayer time, you can pray over everybody. I've done it by the tens of thousands of people. Tens of thousands of people, probably more than 100,000 people have been lined up. I prophesied over them, cumulatively. I, I don't care. I've done it. People come back to me years later. Things I prophesied came to pass. There was no fee for that. There was no sign-up program for that. It just flowed. You understand? But there's relationship with people. Because we've also gone to churches and they don't give a flip about your life. They don't care if you, they don't care to do anything for you. They don't care if you're sad or happy or okay. They don't care about your provision. They don't care about your expenses. They don't care. 
I mean, I, even around here, we've seen it. They don't even say thank you. They give nothing a thought. You know what? It's not that there was a price on anything here, but you've dishonored the anointing, and I think it won't work for you. You're supposed to go out of your way to bring something up. And I was telling another man of God this, and he says, oh, our people from our area where we are, he's in another faraway region, he says, they go out of their way to help to be a blessing. There's no way. They said they can't come to receive unless they also want to be a blessing. I thought, boy, you got good people, man. That's a good place. I'd like to see that, how that works. I'd like to see that work. But some places around here, among certain people, certain churches, maybe certain tribes or certain people where they are, I don't know. They, the way they act is it's unbelievable. You have to say, well, thank God I'm blessed. You know, God has already taken care of me. How many know when you're in partnership with heaven, partnership with him, your bills are already paid? You know, like I was talking about, I keep getting this feeling. I'm seeing people scratching and kicking and struggling. And I'm thinking, I don't have that care. What a blessed man I am. I must be different. I am. I know that. But I, I'm not thinking it like that. And, and I'm also, I'm feeling like, I'm feeling like the realm of heaven. Like I have heaven to go to when I'm done here. Hello? God has got the path all sorted out for me. It's like everything is provided there. Everything is here because I'm in partnership and connection direct with him, with heaven. It's like I'm not thinking about how I can manipulate and connive. I don't do any of that. So if someone doesn't want to be generous or they don't want to be a, a, an honorable person, that doesn't take any any skin off of us, we're already blessed. But really it's, it's for the person hearing to receive and to operate in it. You understand that? Are you getting that? What you do will produce for you. That's why the only control you have over your future, besides your diligent action and service of the Lord also, in whatever capacity that, whatever capacity or category that falls into or under, when you sow, you're commanding a harvest to come back to you. You're investing and in making multiplication happen in your future. Let's lift our hands. The seed is powerful. It works. Some people call it a donation or an offering, but we like to call it also a seed. This is not the tithe. This is what you give as a, an offering or a seed because, because there's a harvest that's coming from it. You're planting something to receive something. You're taking something out of one pocket and from one hand and planting it but you're going to receive it with the other hand and put it in the pocket, multiplied on many pockets. That's the way God works this thing. And when you're doing that, my Lord. I know people right now that are blessed already because they've been sending me seeds online. Thousands of dollars came to pay their bills. They're in other cities they didn't know they'd be in. One person is enjoying something right now today. They were writing me earlier. I was conversing with them uh, overseas. Uh, they're, they're in something right now, but they have been sowing seeds. They have been sending seeds. They're connected. Their blessing has already come upon them. And they could be stuck in a snowstorm somewhere right now. In an old house. Hello. In an old car. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. That's, that's what they have where they are. But they're in this posh place seeing the big world because of me. The connection. God arranged that to happen. The steps for that. Now, the thing I love is I wasn't involved in everything. I didn't have to carve it all out and make it all happen. There were other people involved. There were other things. But God breathed blessing upon them, and then all those other tributaries began to come alive and produce certain opportunities and avenues of places to, to be able to get to certain things, certain places and for things to happen. Are you seeing that? How many want that other kind of life, the one you prayed for, the one you desired all along? Well, this is how you get it. Connect with heaven. Connect with the anointing. Connect with his servant. Connect by your action in covenant. Then now the supernatural flow begins to come from God upon you to bless your life. In Jesus' name. I'll pick this up in another setting. I'm Thomas Matthew IV. I'm praying for you that as you partner together, with God's presence and mantle and anointing that he will begin to lift you and begin to give you greater things than you've ever had in your life. So be it in Jesus' name. I'll talk to you on the next broadcast. Love you much. Great day to you. I look forward to hearing from you.
I look forward to hearing from you. Write me, connect, let me see you in front of the screen. <laughs> if I can't see you face to face, let me see you this way. All right, love you much.